Does your biomed shop repair accessories or attachments? They won't do it because they don't have the capability or the willingness? Maybe you should reconsider. We're going to check something out coming up next right here on Better Biomed. Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we are going to talk about repairing accessories and why you may want to reconsider your shop's policy about not doing it. Well, today I have for you guys is something called skull clamps. Now this is just one example of the type of accessory that I sometimes get to repair in my shop. But since I've been at my shop, I've repaired over 10 of these for various reasons. But each and every one of these, if they get shipped out to get repaired, is going to be between seven and ten thousand dollars, and it might be something simple. So, guys, let's take a look. This is called a skull clamp. If you can take a look at it here, it's got a ratcheting mechanism where the jaw will slide. Let's see if I can do it one-handed. There it goes. So, what they do, it will get fastened to the skull. And this side over here is actually a plunger and it will give you a certain amount of spring pressure on the other side of the skull. Right here you can see jawed adjustments which will attach to arms like these so that it will suspend the human skull so that they can do brain surgery. Yes guys, this is used in neurosurgery. And this item right here normally Many biomed shops just won't repair it. But as I said, there are many things that we can do to these so that they do not have to ship them out and get repaired. There's sometimes metal work that needs to be done. There's sometimes rethreads that have to be done on the holes. Sometimes you have to take this plunger apart, clean it out because some goo juice might get in there. It's a spring-loaded plunger. Sometimes these fasteners will be loose. Lock tight your fasteners, guys. But one of the features I want to show you guys that people should pay the most attention to is you see right here, it says open and lock. So when you rotate this, there's a certain amount of stress that you should have to rotate and get a firm positive latch. And that locks the skull into an exact position. So I'm going to unlock it. I can move it around, lock it. So what will happen to these guys for this particular piece or this fastener will get a little bit loose. And when it gets a little bit loose, this guy here will just willy dilly flop back and forth. It won't lock into a positive position. Now some other things that I've seen happen to these is this guy gets way too loose and now you lose your indexing in here. So when you rotate this guy, you're actually locking it in the unlock position. I know, it's kind of weird. And then when you put it on lock, it's willy-dilly just flopping around. Let's take a look at this guy over here. I know I'm jumping around back and forth. Because I've had to deal so much with these, I think that you guys should know about them. So this piece right here is the spring-loaded plunger. You can see right there, it comes through on this side. So there's one fastener right there that you take out and the plunger will come out the other side. You can see that there's flat right there where you can undo it. One of the other problems I've seen, you can see right here is the skull clamp opened. I've seen where these will get dinged up and they will not slide together correctly or very smoothly. So what we will do is I got a set of files and if there's any burrs or if there's imperfections in this rail right here, we will very finely file them down to make sure that it's nice and linear so that when it slides into your skull clamp, down this channel right here, you can see the tolerances are gonna to be pretty tight. So you wanna make sure that that effortlessly glides in there. Let's see if I can get this guy. So what you want is for this rail right here to very, very easily rotate right past this ratcheting mechanism. 
Now, if you pull up on this guy, it should very quickly and effortlessly return to his home position, which is all the way in, so that it has a nice positive ratchet. You can see I can insert it all the way with almost zero effort. So that's how you know that this guy is good. Go. Back to this side right here. I want you guys to take notice that there are a couple flats right here. You can see one flat right there and one flat is over here. And that allows you to get a set of needle nose pliers or sometimes some needle nose vice grips get them on there and you can take that out and loosen it up and it'll allow that to come apart. There's other pieces that you should take apart as well, especially if you're gonna clean this up and adjust it. Right here, you've got one piece of the fastener and over here is the nut. They have slight little flats on them. You can see one of the flats right there. So what I do is I put vice grips on one side, very, very finely so you're not creating permanent indents in, in the fastener and then you put a set of vice grips on this side and you just crack them loose and then you can take them off and underneath that you'll see a cap I think that's what that one is right there on this version let's see if we got it on this one these are all different age groups of uh, skull clamps so they will have a variety of different fasteners Yep, I think that is a flat-headed cap right there. You can see it right underneath, right in there in that channel. It's a flat-headed cap. So once you take that flat-headed cap off, there will be a nut inside there that you can uh, tighten or loosen. And on some variants, that will tighten or loosen this as well. So that's one of the things that you should always lock tight just as well. Make sure that you get that positive latch right there you're going to tension this one and you're going to tension the one from this side. Just make sure you're indexed properly so that when it locks up, it's on lock, not on unlock, which I've done that on accident before. I had it 180 out of its uh, correct seating. So when it's here on open, it's actually locked up. My bad. But this fastener right here on the end can be uh, removed. This one in here can be removed. And then you take it apart and there is actually some discs that will also have some balls in there. And those balls will sit on little indents. And that is what actually gives you this positive lock right here. So that will all get taken apart and cleaned. Actually, should I do it right now? Screw it. I'm going to do it right now. Well, guys, I was going to show you how to take this guy apart right here. But unfortunately, I don't have the correct needle nose that it takes to get in both that side and that side. And the last thing I want to do is mess up those threads. So I'm going to salvage that. Um, I'll fix that later on at work. I'm not going to take it apart here for you guys. But the important thing to note here is that it should have a very positive latch. And in order to adjust that, you're going to rotate this bolt right here and the nut that's on this side right here and put some Loctite on that guy before you put the cap back on. And the cap goes right there. So there are some things that we can fix on these guys. This one is not repairable. You can see it's all weeble wobbling around right there. That's because the users have a frequent problem of tightening these guys down. It goes on just like that. They tighten it down before it's at the right angle. It might be here, or it might be there, but it's not at a total 90 degree angle when they start tightening it down and it messes up right here. The problem is that the users will continue threading it despite the resistance and it will get close but not tight enough to lock it down. So the problem we have is it does galling. Let's see, I have a perfect example of galling right here. Now take a look at this side. I've got nice shiny threads right in there. But this side is completely chowdered. Take a look at that. They messed it up with that bolt right there because they kept screwing it in despite the resistance. Now on some of these, it's completely fixable. 
like on this one here, I want you to take a note that there's a hard stainless insert right here called a helicoil. And on this side, you have soft aluminum. So what the helicoil does is that they take a hardened steel, like stainless steel, and it screws into a threaded hole made in aluminum. You can see the threaded hole right there. This is actually a hole where the helicoil was pulled out because they damaged it. This is a correctly helicoil threaded hole. That one is fixable. This one is not fixable. Take a notice of these V's right here, right here, right here, right here. These V's ensure that this insert does not spin around. It's actually installed using a hydraulic press. So if they mess up the threads in this guy, you might be able to tap it. And we will definitely cover this in another video. Here is an example of a twist tap. It's kind of a specialty tap. You can see it's threaded. See the threads right there? And you insert it into the handle here and you will retap the hole. Now you can't do that if the hole is really messed up. Like this one right here. Unfortunately, I wish I could, but this here is a send back. It's a total loss. Because if I retap that, there's not going to be enough material to keep a brand new bolt from weeble wobbling around as you insert it and tighten it down. So it's going to be a band-aid fix and we will get this problem all over again. It's not repairable. However, these ones here, all you got to do is if you have a messed up hole with a helicoil, you might be able to tap that back out and tap it clean. So it's nice clean threads like this one. Beautiful threads. But if you can pull out the helicoil, which you might be able to do with a fine flat blade screwdriver, you can reinsert the helicoil. And I believe that this one here is a 1 half by 13 coarse thread. I can check that on this guy later. But you can correct those by inserting a new helicoil, which will come in a kit. It's a series of coils and a T-handle. And what you do is you screw the T-handle in with Loctite on the new helicoil. And then you unscrew the T-handle and the helicoil stays in the hole, just like this one. So this one's fixable. That one over there, it's a total loss because the users put this guy in and they just kept screwing it and screwing it and screwing it until it eventually bound up total. Oh well, it's only money, right? So that's all I got for you guys. They are fixable. We do try and get at least a first look because as you can see, I've fixed about 10 of them, 10, maybe 12 so far doing different techniques of repair. And for every one that you are able to salvage, it's five to $7,000. To me, that's a huge win. In the six months that I've been working at this location, I would have already saved them fifty, sixty thousand dollars. That's pretty good for a five or six months. So guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I wish I could give you a little more in-depth knowledge to what's going on with these skull clamps, maybe even some footage of them using it on a patient, but that's heavily frowned upon, so I can't. But try and fix your stuff at least before you send it out. Maybe you can save some money. Thanks for watching.